It's so much fun to sit and watch PowerPoint all day long. Um, so I'll do the whole talk in 30 seconds, and then we'll go into more detail. If you're, let's take a step back. No one ever went into a store to buy a quarter-inch drill bit. What they wanted was a quarter-inch hole, and they were forced to buy the drill bit. No one wants to buy AR or VR or MR. What they want to do is solve a problem, and if the best tool to solve the problem is a digital reality tool, then you'll make sense. The challenge in the marketplace today, and we deal with Fortune 1000, is the hype from Hollywood, the, the minority report expectation of where and what this magical tool can do and what wonderful uniform unicorns can jump out of the, the floor of a gymnasium and, and dance and do merrily things doesn't translate to a CEO who's trying to hit numbers the next quarter, the next quarter, the next quarter. And the life expectancy of a CEO of a public company is very short, okay? If you have a kitten, it lasts longer. Um, CMO, it's the half-life. The jokes don't get better, but I'll keep going. Um, <laughs> You know, CMO has, has about uh, 36 to 42 month life expectancy. So the ROI has to be immediate. It has to be massive. It has to be changing or it overshadows the risks. So if it's not this amazing miracle, Iron Man gonna change the world, Tony Stark, what do we have today what can we project realistically will be cost effective to do in the near term, next 12 to 18 months, and where does it play? So you don't have to wait for the best headset. You don't even have to wait for any headset. We've actually had augmented reality doing quite well. If you think of broadcast football, we all watch at home and we know where the first yard line is. We know how much they have to run. We can see all of that because it's been overlaid. But what's been missing is the out-of-home experience equivalent of that. If you're in a stadium today or an arena today, you're getting a worse experience than you are at home. So now we have the ability to enhance that out-of-home experience and give you the same level that you've already expected. So nothing new has to be figured out from the UX or UI side of it. All you have to have is a new delivery medium, and those are coming out in the next 12 months. Uh, my colleague Alan showed this earlier, which is really, from my standpoint, the psychology of who you're selling to. So right now, there is skepticism on AR and VR in the C-suites across the world. And that skepticism is actually healthy and good, because it focuses people not on what a tool can do, not on what the visual range is, not about how many pixels, not how many frames per second per eye, or all the nuance that makes this real, it's we are now at the point where there are actual billion dollar savings taking place from real world clients in the space, and we'll go into some of those. Um, so everybody that's focused on changing the Hollywood aspect of it, of what's going to take, that's going to take a much longer cycle because it's facing other issues. And just to put it in perspective, having spent some time on that side of it, less than 10% of the US population sets foot in a movie theater each year. This is not going to change that trend. This may bolster aspects. This may create new out-of-home experiences. But that's not where the ROI is. And the first step to ROI is the hardware has to be as mass produced and as available to the consumer for a very simple reason. When it's at that scale, the consumer will already have the familiarity, just as happened with the PC. Most people did not learn how to use a PC or a smartphone on the job. They were using those in their own lives, and then those tools became part of the workplace. I'm in consulting, so I have to show a graph. Here's two. Um, what they really say, if you want, and all these decks are available to everybody, so you don't have to try to photograph it and then get the small print, is we're talking about a multi-trillion dollar market in a very short period of time, in less than 10 years. So congratulations, you're here, you're focused on a huge growth opportunity, 
And all you have to do to be successful right now is find one niche that you can deliver ROI and you will have clients lined up behind you and build those. So we're focused on this um, because we deal with retailers, manufacturers, uh, virtually every industry that you could think of, and they're facing huge areas. When we break down where those areas are, um, you're really looking at um, mobility, e-commerce, B2B, all, all the areas that you would think, and it's not that there's one area that's going to dominate. This is a tool, this is a fourth transformation. If you think of the PC and the web and mobile, this is of that scale, if not larger. This is bigger than CRM. This is bigger than, than many of the things. So the, the, the places to play right now, safety, both it's mandated in many industries by government, and this is an easier way, an easier solution, and the easiest way to show ROI. Six people died last year, what'd that cost you, okay? Um, when, thank you for the laugh in the back. When <laughs> things go really wrong in certain industries around safety, the opportunity is there to solve. Design, most of the tech world believes that everything in the rest of the world is designed in CAD and is this efficient, magnificent process. It isn't. If you knew how much of the world still used clay models to make every part that you see in a car, you would be shocked. So there's huge cost savings in not just reducing cost and waste, but truncating time to respond to consumers' demands and consumer changes. And if you want to talk about an industry that's in the, in the crosshairs right now, the auto industry never had to worry about what you were looking at. You were looking out that window, okay? Now, what will you be doing in a car? Huge fundamental change. What, chat, what does that do to the interior of the car? What use cases do you now have? How do we transform our lives? Construction, another issue, another area that technology is pretty much not tapped since, you know, Archimedes and, and the lever and the pulley. I mean, uh, so huge opportunities uh, to not only visualize and build safer, quicker, and better, but to have more iterations, more input from the client during the process, and less, less waste during the process, because you can actually walk around your non-existent building to make sure you're doing it properly. Uh, security, I don't have to tell everybody we're living in an age of heightened security. By the way, no laptops allowed on planes, and you're going to very quickly see an awful lot of goggles selling so people can travel and still do their work. Um, which brings us to travel, co-location, the cost of moving people, the distance, the, the inability in many cases, huge area, but also the leisure aspect of your dollars are so valuable, you want to experience that location before you go, you want to understand what your choices are, you want to have a feel of that resort, that cruise, that excursion, and retail. Again, if somebody's having their best year, they don't need your help. Retail's having a tough time right now. Now there's a lot of technologies that are in the favor of retail and will make the smart retailer the choice and destination to have an out of home experience that you cannot do just shopping online. So huge areas to focus on. Um, just gonna hit on a few of these and in 15 minutes, skip. So training, there's been enough studies. We've been in immersive uh, training uh, for uh, many years now that it's more efficient, but let me give you another thought that we've learned on the training process. For high turnover jobs, training is a sunk cost that keeps them going out the door. You train somebody how to assemble a piece of fast food and then they go get their next job. You have to train the next person the next. Training is now becoming a heads up display where you only have to train people to understand that and the information only gets better and better and the headset stays when the employee leaves. So more and more jobs will have the skill set all the way out to the field where if you're repairing a cable system, a phone system, and whatever, you may not know that piece of equipment from 1982 that only Ralph knows and they have to send and roll a second truck. Now Ralph can stay in a nice air conditioned office and see what you see and do six or seven different uh, locations. Um, QSRs, you raise the minimum wage. There's only one outcome to that. It is not a better standard of living, and it's not a political statement. It is 
forcing more automation more quickly. So instead of shadowing another employee for training, you can sit in VR in the corner and learn every aspect and learn the muscle memory of what to do. Uh, one fun tip from our designers, we have six design studios with, with brilliant stuff. Everything that I've seen downstairs and in most places on Augmented is adding to the environment. Here's my gift to you today. You can subtract from the environment. So you're putting together the super duper Mick J burger and in comes the order with no cheese. You go to grab for cheese and there's no cheese in the cheese bin. You can't put it on the cheeseburger. You can't make the mistake, even though it's really there. Um, this is my favorite example. Um, when you're sitting on a plane, those, those big metal containers that they slide in, well, there's a bunch of dudes and dudettes whose job is to throw packages in there, and it's a high turnover job. And if you're doing it for five or more years, you get about 30% more in. Translate that to, to metrics. That means most are 30% empty, or one out of three planes is flying empty, or you're wasting two billion in jet fuel. So now you put on the AR goggles, you now play 3D Tetris. I see the package, I know where to put it. If I get a good game score, I make more money on my shift. Your better employees enjoy their job more and make more money. The ones that can't understand 3D dimensional spatial relationships, you know, they get a job somewhere else and the overnight shipping company saves a couple billion dollars a year. Safety is a huge area for improvement. Um, it is amazing how many people are injured in certain industries. I mean, the number one thing driving uh, self-driving autonomous vehicles that you can't argue against is it saves a million lives, right? So depending on your industry, depending on the thing, and there's many ways to, to deal with this. There's the, the government mandated way uh, that you can make training happen. You can work with industry. Augmented knowledge. None of us know everything and none of us know the latest and none of us can always be up to date. Now you can always have an augmented way to work in your world. This will become not just a killer app for work, this is how we're going to be living our lives. If 10 years ago I told you that you'd be looking at your phone over 100 times a day, you'd be like, what are you talking about, okay? Now we can't live without it, we have an augmented life. Looking down and walking into poles is a pretty stupid life, we'll be looking up. Uh, design, I talked on this, uh, every industry prototypes, manufacturing overseas, getting teams together, being able to see things in different lighting, different times of day, different textures, materials, configurations, uh, speed prototyping off of it, tremendous uh, improvement in efficiency. And if you go on the trends, the trends that are driving uh, the next generation of consumers, um, the era of mass market and everybody getting the same thing is going to the bespoke customized. And this is the way to do that, to start making your design process more fluid and eventually allow the consumer to have input into their product. This is happening with the largest uh, tennis shoe brands. This is happening with clothing retailers. And you will see this actually happening to a certain extent uh, with automotive. Uh, construction, literally, very little's changed, but I just want to give one, two second, and I, I don't see a time clock, so I'm, I'm just going as fast as I can. Um, picture that crane. Picture that's your job. In the morning, you climb up that crane all the way up there, bring your lunch, whatever. You're going to 10 o'clock, have to move the thing from here to there. You know, at noon, you got to move the other thing from there to there. You follow. But you're not looking out the window doing this, okay? That, that went away with Fred Flintstone. What you're really doing is you're looking at a bank of monitors. Now realize for a second that wind comes and those cranes do fall over every year and kill people every year. Now you, instead of being up at the top of that crane, you can be sitting in a nice air-conditioned office and operating the crane in San Jose, Dubai, Manila, wherever. You can then do the same with the equipment that's on the, the actual site, the big shovel thingy. I know all these technical terms. Um, and you now start seeing an automation that is more efficient, more safe, and more predictable from a cost basis. Uh, so you can sit in a control room or all of those screens can be virtual in a pair of glasses where even when you're on vacation and you're called in, you could be on the beach in Maui and still move that tough crane thing that you're the only person in the company that knows how to get it off that model uh, ship. Uh, security, when you start bringing in facial recognition, uh, just uh, met with a company fascinating that can tell 
if you're nervous or guilty or whatever based on your gait of your walk, okay? So a lot of stuff going into this, but even on a more simple area, coming to a trade show like this and being able to walk and go, hi, Fred, how's Sheila? Um, you'll have all of this on heads up and it'll become uh, more normal. Uh, the travel uh, and hospitality clients that we have are seeing 30% more engagement when people are able to actually have an immersive experience of seeing that room, okay? That is a huge differentiator uh, and goes across. Retail has to change, so let me just give you a couple examples of retail. You've just been convinced of the paleo diet by your friend who was fat and out of shape and suddenly looks like Schwarzenegger and go, I'm going to go paleo, and you can't remember exactly all the stuff. Now you can walk down the aisle, and of the 40,000 items in that supermarket, you will only see the paleo items, or the ones on Oprah, or the halal, or the kosher, or the vegan, or whatever it might be. Uh, a whole new way to look at that. And then you have to look at it from a brand's perspective that you're now going to have the ability to say, who do you trust to share that relationship of who's filtering? And whoever has that now controls you in that out-of-home shopping. One more minute. There's happy people. Um, <laughs> uh, equipment, I'm skipping stories. I'll be around outside. Um, putting anything together, and this is a plug that I didn't know I was going to talk about, but I put in this weekend. Ring is absolutely amazing consumer experience to install yourself. Um, most things aren't. So now, making sure that everything that you ship that has anything, you know, the, the IKEA aspect of life should now be augmented and you then reduce returns. And thank you. Do I have time for questions? Yeah. Okay. That was the speed round. One way to get it started. Um, question from Jay? Go ahead, sir. Question. How do uh, this play into this environment? Meaning things that happen on an annual basis, a championship, an Olympics, this whole thing where uh, you can use AR, VR to engage uh, pre, uh, you know, sort of like laying the lane, they lay out the land. So, uh, I've been talking to a number of sports franchises of how do you have the experience on game day start before you're in the seat, before you've come to the park. How many opportunities do you have to upsell during that? Okay, we have better seats here today. You know, you're a valued, trusted person, or to keep track of, based on the, the mobile apps, who comes earlier, who hangs out later, who's getting dinner at the place. So there's a whole lot of stuff. But back to what I said, the experience of having the stats and all that overlay. If you are a fantasy sports player, and there are a lot of fantasy sports players, wouldn't you like to see the play-by-play -play of what's happening with things floating over to tell you how that's impacting? Absolutely you would. What I've heard from the, the uh, sports owners, and uh, uh, Steve Ballmer was uh, talking about this yesterday, is they don't want an experience, and they don't believe the fan does, where you're looking down at your phone and, oh, oh, here's a, you know, that's not a good experience. If you can watch the game live and have that augmented experience, everybody wins. And by the way, sports, a live event, is looking for something additional to sell to an additional sponsor. So if you can come up with that great solution, there are people lined up around the block to pay to put it into that, that sport. Yeah, wouldn't you rather have a, a, a pair of sunglasses that, that are light, uh, lightweight, that you're just sitting there and you're watching the game and you set the parameters of how much I just want to say, ooh, he really got injured. What's that do to my fantasy forts thing? Da, da, da. What's the other game in the corner? You know, you can have endless monitors like that example. Another? Got to wrap. I'm outside if anybody wants to talk. Thank you.